I'm Chef Jim with Coastal Alabama College, and today I'd like to teach you the minimum cooking temperatures for meats and vegetables that we use in sanitation. So let's start first with 135. So 135 is for vegetables, okay? And for vegetables, things like potatoes, anything you're gonna cook, anything at all on the vegetable side, and you're gonna cook it. Now, of course, you're not gonna cook a salad, right? but things that are gonna cook, you're gonna go to 135 on a vegetable. That's your minimum cooking temperature. Let's go over here to 175. This one you're gonna have hard to find in your sanitation book, but anytime, tea. So if you're gonna make sweet tea, or you're gonna make a hot tea, you're gonna cook those, because those leaves are organic and they come from the soil. You're gonna need to cook tea to 175. That's the magic number. Okay, with that, we can go to the heart of this, and let's go to 145. 145, and I'm gonna put down any type of meat at all. So if you've got meats, pork, fish, I'll come back here, I'll switch this to beef. How's that, beef, does that sound better? Beef, pork, fish, lamb. You're gonna cook it to 145. Now let's go a little step further. If it's a roast, if it's a chop, if it's a filet, if it's a filet, if it's a steak, it's going to fit in this category of 145. All right, so let's talk about the beef first, and it kind of makes sense when you're talking about beef. When they butcher a cow, it's the intestines that has all of the harmful microorganisms. And if, if the intestines come in contact with the meat, the outside portion, then that's what's gonna become contaminated. But it's only gonna be on the outside of the meat. So when you cook something like a steak, you're actually gonna cook on the outside of the steak a lot hotter than the inside of the steak. So 145 internally, it's probably gonna be getting near 165 on the outside of the steak and it's gonna kill the bacteria on the outside of the steak. So that's why we can go to 145 on it. So if you got beef, pork, fish, chicken, and if it's a roast chop, filet, filet, or steak, you're gonna cook it at 145. That makes sense. So let's move to the next category, 155. If I take that beef and I ground it up and I make hamburger, If I take this pork and I make sausage, now I've taken that bacteria that was on the outside of the meat and I've put it to the inside of the meat. So that means you gotta go 10 degrees higher to kill that bacteria. Does that make sense? Pretty much. Now, suppose I took something like a, a piece of beef and I put breading on the outside. That breading, I put, put flour on it, I put some cornmeal on the outside, or I put some stuffing on the outside, not stuffing, but um, you know, some sort of breading on the outside, then what's gonna happen is I still, it's gonna insulate the meat from killing the bacteria on the outside, so I've gotta go to 155 there. So whenever I put breading on the outside, it's gonna move it up. Another thing is if you marinate or you inject something. So if I do a marinate, when I do the marinade, I'm gonna in inject this marinade inside the beef. Okay, now I gotta go 155, because the bacteria may be in the marinade. And now I put it inside of the meat, whatever it is. So all these are gonna fit into the 155 category. Those are kind of like the oddballish ones. Um, let's go to 165. So the obvious one is chicken, anything poultry. chicken, duck, a goose, anything along those lines, uh, you're gonna cook to 165. That's just pretty much everybody accepts that one there. Let's go to the next one. Anything that has a lot of processing. So you have very little processing, a little bit more processing, and now if I have something with heavy processing, I've really done a lot more processing, a lot more chopping and slicing and more ingredients. So if I did like a stew, 
a soup? How about a casserole? Right? A casserole, you've got a lot of combinations. You get a lot of things. You're maybe chopping onions, you're chopping celery, and they might have dirt on it. And also, you know, you're chopping other things going on there. So that's going to be the 165 category because you have a lot of processing there. Stuffing will fit in that category too. Got a lot of processing going off there. Okay, so casserole, let me pick on a casserole. What would be something like a casserole? How about just something simple like macaroni and cheese? That's a simple thing. Okay, that would be a casserole, and that also would be up in the 165 range. All right, so we got poultry, we got soups, stews, casseroles, stuffings. Let's come down here to anything we microwave. So um, let me do this, and I'll race it. So I have, if I have a piece of meat. And I cook the inside to 145, then the outside might be 125. That's not going to work. That means somebody's going to get sick. But if I have a piece of meat and I microwave it to 165, then maybe on the outside it's going to cook to 145, and that'll probably be a better standard. So if I took one of these things here and I cooked it, I'm going to get a minimum cooking of there. So the 165 is actually going to cook from the interior because it cooks the inside more than the outside. So that's why we have it in the microwave. Now, years ago, it was a little bit different. It used to be you used to do the minimum cooking temperature plus 20 degrees in the form of books. Now, well, they just say 165 in the microwave. All right, let's go to the next one, and that is anything that you reheat. All right, so class, I'm going to ask a question. If I took a pork chop, and I originally could cook a pork chop to 145. And I cooked it, and I didn't leave it out wrong. Maybe I left it out for maybe 10 minutes, I wrapped it in, and I put it in the refrigerator. How come when I take it out of the refrigerator, do I have to reheat it to 165? And here's your answer. When it goes in the refrigerator, you gotta worry about cross-contamination. Somebody might put a chicken above it in the refrigerator and the juice from the chicken might drop down into the pork chop and cross-contaminate it within the refrigerator. So that's why we'll reheat, because we've got to worry, because chicken's probably the highest one, the highest temp we've got to worry about. And even though you cook it to the right temp, this, these juices from the poultry may get on there and that's going to make that pork chop unsafe when you reheat. So that's why we're reheating the 165. That's why we don't go to 145 the second time. That's real the reason for that. All right, we're almost there, and there's two more things you need to know about. And we're going to go back to the 145 range, okay, the 145 temperature range, and talk about eggs. Eggs, in America, we know that when we go to a restaurant, we may want our eggs over easy. Well, the government's not going to take that away from you. But we know that if, if, if you have an egg, probably the bacteria is going to be in the yolk. So the government allows it that at 145, if you cook to order your eggs, so eggs cooked to order, you can have it that way. So if you go down to the local breakfast place and you want your eggs over easy or you want it sunny side, you want to have a poached egg, then you can have it with a yolk is not cooked. So let's look at an egg for a little bit. Here's an egg. Okay, and I'll go like this. We'll switch it out. Here's an egg, and here's a yolk. The egg white cooks at 145. The egg yolk cooks at 155. All right, so let's go back over here. Eggs held. So if they're going to cook your egg up and then they're going to put it in a cabinet, they're going to hold it, and they're going to put it on a sandwich like a half hour, an hour later, which you're going to find in a lot of your fast food places. Fast food places are going to do breakfast. And what the government is saying is you have to fully cook the egg if you're going to hold it. 
because the bacteria is probably here and it's going to multiply if, if you keep it in a warm environment and that's what's going to make that egg very dangerous. If you're cooking it to order, chance after there is, it's not multiplying, it's going to go directly to you and your, your body can probably fight it off. So eggs cooked to order, 145. Eggs held, the eggs could be fully cooked. This is pretty much, and probably makes more sense, if you think about minimum processing and the amount of processing, it makes more sense to my students. So I, I hope you enjoyed the presentation.